And let's kick this off. Who's ready to learn about marketing? Comment marketing in the chat. So stay tuned through the full webinar. We have a, an amazing gift at the end for each of you um, to help you get things started for your marketing. And as you guys know, we are so uh, focused on education and training here at Business 411. So that's going to be part of your giveaway at the end, Ariel. You should be able to uh, turn your video on if you want to pop in and say hello. Ariel's also going to be co-hosting the Q&A with me at the end. Um, so she is the CMO of Business 411. Okie dokie. So first of all, if you don't know about Business 411, I just want to take this opportunity to share our vision with you. Our vision is to help you build your dream team, the right prop processes, and most importantly, build your dream company. That's what we're all about is helping each and every individual on this call accomplish the company, the dream job that they have if you're working for someone else uh, to elevate the roofing industry. So some of the ways that we help do that, one of the main things that we do is business development. We want, we're very passionate about creating educational solutions for the roofing industry, whether it's someone who's just getting into the industry someone who has an established company and is looking to streamline their processes, uh, create a very beautiful brand that stands out and is memorable, uh, branding when it comes to vehicles, logos, designs, you name it. So um, throughout that experience, we've had the pleasure, currently we have over a thousand different companies uh, using Business 411 educational solutions from our manuals to our homeowner education guides. We expanded into homeowner education over the last two years very significantly. And as a consultant, I've had the privilege to consult one-on-one -on -one for over $750 million in the roofing industry revenue. Um, I've been an operation on SOP consultant for some of the best companies in the industry, from manufacturing to supply to roofing and restoration. And we've had the pleasure of launching over 650 brands. Uh, we've custom designed over 100 brands in the space. So everything that we're going to be sharing with you today is based off of our real experience. This is real world marketing, things that we've seen work, the technology and the tools that we want to empower and help you uh, just grow your knowledge. So today's goal is to uncover the most common marketing secrets in the roofing industry. So here's a quick fact for you. Did you know that most consumers do not have a specific company in mind before they search online? When people are going online to find a company, a lot of times they don't even know who they're going to find. So 80% of the people right now who are searching for roofing replacement, roofing repair, do not even know about you. They're not even thinking about your company. They're just going for the first thing that they can find. So these leads are easily swayed into working with your company just based on line, based on what they're seeing online, what's the website quality, and most important, the experience when they call in. So something we're going to be touching on, what's the difference in the experience when a customer calls you for the very first time and you have a proper process to bring that lead in versus the experience for a client who's calling you, who's left on hold, you're driving down the street, you're scribbling on a notepad, you're not, you don't have a proper system and process to nurture and intake that lead into your business and increase the chances of turning into a sale. So 86% of consumers read reviews when deciding what business to work with. I don't know about you, but I feel like I read a review on anything, anything from as simple as leggings that I'm going to buy on Amazon to a vehicle that I'm going to purchase. So uh, reviews are so important and something that we're going to be talking about as well. 26% uh, of consumers say that they actually use social media to find products to purchase. So maybe if they, even if they find you on another platform, they're going to go on, on social media, they're going to go on your reviews, they're going to see what information can they find about your business? This is why your online visibility, visibility, your online brand, your online voice is so important and crucial to your marketing. Something we're going to start off with today is discussing, discussing budget. So often we hear this question, what should my marketing budget be? 
All righty, so we're going to break this down for you. First of all, in the home service industry, what we're re we recommend and what we've seen work based off of our experience is 5 to 6% of gross revenue. And I'm going to explain that to you a little bit more. And this is the overall business expenses that we typically see in most of the home service businesses that we work with. So you have your payroll, any miscellaneous business services, your overhead, and the cost of materials and doing business. And one thing that's really important, and my business partner, Ariel, says this all the time, it doesn't matter what's going on in your business. One of the biggest things is that you always want to keep sales and marketing going. So these are the sample budgets that we're discussing. The first is when you're building your fundamentals. So when you're building your fundamentals, this is where we're talking about your brand, making sure you have yard signs, door hangers, business cards, your hats, your shirts, your vehicle wraps. That a lot of times is going to be covered in your marketing fundamentals mode. But then you get to the point where you want to grow. You want to push yourself to that next limit. And that's when you're going to get into maintenance or scale mode, depending on how aggressive your business goals are. And really when we're going into scale mode, we typically recommend that once you have a good operational structure running in your business as well that can handle a larger volume of business. So that's by the time you get into scale mode, we, we're looking to see, hey, this business has a good operations. They have good production, uh, quality assurance. They have good online reviews. Typically, most of the companies that we're working with in the beginning stages, going from fundamentals to maintenance mode, their goals are starting to drive sales. You've picked up maybe an, one sales rep or you're an owner that has hired an admin or maybe you're at two or three sales reps and you're looking to push that barrier to get to that next level, whatever that next level looks like for you, uh, going into maintenance to scale mode. So what we did for you is we went ahead and we broke down the math. One of the best things is really being clear, what are your goals? So the first question I want to ask is how many jobs do you need to close per week to meet your yearly revenue goal? And at the end of this presentation, we're going to give you the worksheets that go along with this information, because our goal is to give you the information necessary to implement, not just to come onto this webinar to learn. Hopefully you do choose to do business with us at some point, but regardless, we want to give you something that you can walk away with and take and implement into your business. From there, we're going to discuss closing rate. And I do this presentation quite often live. And so when I ask, uh, and I'll actually ask in the comments here, who knows what their closing rate is? If you don't mind dropping it in the chat, what is your closing rate typically? Can you come over here? Thirty five percent. OK, 38 percent. So a lot of times we hear between 30 to 40 percent when you have someone other than the company or owner selling. When the owner selling, typically you're going to see about 60 to 70 percent. So if you're an owner who's still selling, that's also a fact for you to be aware of as you expand your team. Uh, it doesn't mean that your sales reps aren't necessarily doing a bad job. It means they may need more coaching. But it's also a huge difference when an owner is meeting with a client versus a sales rep or team member. So um, one thing we want to really differentiate is what is the difference between a lead versus an appointment? So what we're going to start off with is your yearly goal. And you're going to divide that by 12. Who, If you're in an area where it snows or it's seasonal, yeah, give me a thumbs up in the chat because you're going to use a different metric. You're not going to use the dividing by 12 month period. You're going to have a nine month season typically. And then you're going to divide that by however many weeks. So if you're at a 12 uh, month period, you're going to divide that by 52. If you're in a nine month period, um, nine times four, 36, you're going to divide that by 36 weeks. So take your goal, divide it by 36. If you're nine months, maybe 40 weeks, if you're 10 months and so on. Now, if you're doing multiple trades, you're going to take your average ticket. In this case, the average ticket that I'm using is 20K. So since my weekly goal is $29,000 in sales, my average ticket is 20,000. That means I'm going to need to do at least two sales per week. And this is whether you are a business owner or a sales rep on this call. It's really important for you to understand what is your sales goal. Um, and 1.5 million, depending on your territory, depending on where you're at, 
uh, being in a sales rep position or an owner position can be huge. As, as a sales rep, depending on your market, you can be a multi-million dollar sales rep. We've seen it happen over and over again in the industry. So if your average closing rate is 40%, that's going to mean that the sales per week divided by that closing percentage is four leads minimum. Now, this is a very important fact What I was talking about the difference between leads versus appointment. And this metric what I'm using is actual appointments for I need to see at least four appointments. Now, let's say I had eight call-ins. That doesn't mean that I got eight leads. What matters is how many appointments, how many sits that I have in front of a client. So that's really what we're thinking about these metrics. That's what we're thinking about is how many people did I get to sit down when we're referring to lead in this specific chart? When we're talking in some of our other classes and lessons that we do, we talk about this a little bit differently. So if your goals are 2 million or 5 million year as well, we've done the math for you. We want to make this information very easy for you to plug and play. And you can put this anywhere that you like. Remember, we do have this as a sheet at the end of this webinar. You'll be able to scan a QR code and download this information to fill in this worksheet on your own time, plus answer some really great questions that we have prepared for you as well. So going into understanding what our goal is, and that's a huge part of what we do at Business 411, is we always want to start off with what are the results that we're after? What are we trying to achieve? What is our objective? And whether that's financial planning, marketing planning, or even figuring out how to grow the business to the next step or figuring out your goals within the company is where you're going to start off with what's the result for this specific topic within the business that we're looking at and then breaking it down from there. So in this in this next question is what marketing strategies work best? Now, the correct way to really think about when you're creating your marketing strategy is not just going to be one dimensional. It's not, hey, PPC worked for this one person. So now it's going to work for every other contractor that we work with. Uh, it's not just, hey, social media ads did really good for my friend in Canada who has a uh, 10,000 followers on Instagram or Facebook. And so now they're going to automatically work for me as well. What we want to provide you with is some understanding on so many different ways where you can actually funnel clients from. And then what we believe is in market testing these multiple pipeline channels. So if you're looking to get a head start, we're going to look at some of our paid resources. You have Google PPC, which we're going to deep dive into Google in the next part of this presentation. Uh, Google LSA, you might know this as Google My Business. It was formally named like that on your Google Business profile. It's been renamed. Google LSA used to be called, referred to primarily as Google Guaranteed. Okay. However, when you still online search it, you'll still see the Google Guaranteed uh, check mark. Next, you have organic SEO. This is something that a lot of companies, it's going to take time to invest in, especially. Uh, then you have social media ads. You have print ads and mailers. If you're doing direct mail, that's awesome. And local TV spots. Now, all of these strategies might work for you. Some of these strategies might work for you. None of these strategies might work for you. Um, next is free. So, And we're going to talk about the ones that are going to work for everyone on Google. On the free side, you have client referrals. Everybody who has been in business for a while has clients who know, like, and trust them and will refer other business to them. Same thing with social media. If you're getting leads from social media, it's because you're actively posting about what you do. Your friends and family are seeing you online. They're wanting to support you. People within your community are contacting you. Uh, social media was responsible for the first million dollars we did in Business 411 just off of organic posts and community engagement. Then you have a door to door. Um, a big thing for us is networking events. We invest significantly into networking events because we believe in educating our community. It brings us more qualified clients who understand what we're trying to teach them and it creates a better partnership. So thinking about that for yourself, what are some networking events that could be attracting you to your ideal clients, the people that you wanna be doing business with are out there within your community. Those customers who are looking for the best experience possible and the best company to do business with, they want 
to work with you. So we have to make sure that they're able to find you. Then you have your online reviews in this day and age, the online reviews. And if you're a sales rep at a company or if you're an owner, making sure you're generating those online reviews, making sure that people are uh, establishing and helping you grow your credibility by listing you by name, sharing their experience, most importantly, creating stories through the reviews that are engaging and build up that experience because that's going to soft sell the client when they're looking at your Google business profile or they're looking at your social media. Um, then you have online directories. For the most part, we encourage always getting on the online directories so you have as much visibility and reach as possible. So going into Google, Google currently has 94% market share of lead search engines. So 94% of the lead search engine market, that is covered by Google. And we're going to break down how does this work? How do you rank on Google? How do you appear? Especially in some of those markets that have thousands of contractors. I believe we ran a search for a contractor in Dallas. And there's 4,300 contractors within a 25-mile radius in Dallas. Um, and I believe half of those were accredited by the BBB. So what we wanted to provide you with today, this is something that I've gone through years and years of trying to explain to the different businesses that we work with, just because we believe that information is power and really understanding the tools and resources available to you will help you make a decision on what you want to invest your business dollars on. So starting at the top, this is Google LSA. And on that worksheet that we're going to provide you with at the end, it's going to give you this in a listed format. So you can print this out for your own uh, as you're continuing to interview marketing companies or people that you want to do business with. So starting at the top with Google LSA, this is a great way for you to be able to contact for clients to be able to contact you. I'm going to go into the specifics of LSA as well for you. And then you have Google PPC. So this is paid per click. Then you have your Google business profile and organic SEO. So these are people anytime they put in roof replacement near me, roofing repair, roofing service, uh, anything, maybe if you're doing siding or gutters, any type of service um, in your area or if they're looking for a specific city, this is what where you can possibly appear. Or if you're not doing any marketing at all, you might not be appearing on these searches at all. So looking into LSA, this is the very first opportunity that you have to appear on Google when people are searching for your business. Another great thing is that here, Google may reimburse you for leads that are not qualified. Something that our team does is help our contractors and the people that we work with, with making sure that we're only paying for qualified leads through LSA. Now, clients can book appointments directly through here, and the cost per lead is typically lower than uh the cost per lead for LSA is typically lower than PPC. So those are just some simple facts for you to understand for LSA. Now, when it comes to PPC, the best way for me to help you understand this is, I like to use this example. Imagine you're at an auction online, your business, there's a customer coming to the auction looking for roofing replacement. The market is set by the people in the room. How many people are also bidding on that roofing replacement? So if you have multiple contractors in your area running PPC ads, that's going to raise and increase the cost of PPC in your demographic. So the cost of leads for on PPC vary significantly from one zip code to the next. We've seen very cheap campaigns for pennies on the dollars, and we've seen uh campaigns where you are paying significantly more. So this is something very important and why you have to choose someone who knows your market, who understands roofing and what your goals are as a business to be able to make accurate suggestions for you. So this is going to vary based on your area. This is the fastest way to get leads from Google because as soon as you turn a PPC on, you'll be able to start appearing based off of what your bids are. Setup is a little bit tricky if you're new to it, and it can be very expensive. The biggest thing with PPC is not setting it up properly and making and seeing basically money go down the drain. So you have to make sure that if you are going to set it up, you are using a company that is credible or you have the knowledge and tools necessary in order to be able to sell, set up the ads effectively. Hey, everyone. I just want to hop in and yeah. ask a couple questions. Um, so far, Liz is doing a phenomenal job going through how Google's going to help your business the most. Can you guys drop in the chat uh, LSA or PPC, which one of those you're using or if you're using none? 
I just want to get a feel for how many of you guys are taking advantage of these tools on Google. All right, Angela. So not using either of those. Rachel, you're using PPC. Okay, great. Eric, you're not using any of these yet. Jacob, using LSA. Lewis, uh, used to use PPC for Yelp. Um, Will's not using any. He's just starting up. Frank, use LSA. Okay. A lot of a lot of people in here are not using LSA, so continue to tune in, and we're going to go through how this is going to help you the most. Absolutely. And um, also towards the end of this call, remember, you are able to use our team uh, wisely. And that's what we're all about is providing you guys with more education. Um, so going back to LSA, just so you guys understand, this is the top. This is something that everybody should be using because it's the best way to get leads from Google right away um, when it comes to making sure that these leads that you're getting are qualified. If not, you might be able to get reimbursed. PPC is the quickest way to turn ads on. You just have to have someone who's very qualified, understands your market, and understands how to set up Google ads specifically. Now, going into uh, your Google business profile, drop a comment in the chat. Everybody on this call, you need to have a Google business profile. If you do not have it, go ahead. And as soon as this call is done, that is the very first thing that you need to do. So your Google business profile, you want to make sure that it's optimized. You want to make sure that you have all of the information properly filled out. It has all of the, the information about your company and you're creating engaging posts. Now, if you're like most business owners and you have a million things that you're handling on a day-to-day -day basis, it might be a little bit difficult to make sure that you're still making time to post on your Google business profile. However, if you take photos while you're at an inspection, even use something as simple as chat GPT and write, make me a post about this inspection, make me a post about, uh, write a caption about a before and after for a house with gray siding and a black roof or whatever. It doesn't matter. You can use resources that are going to help you. Um, you can also work with someone who can help you do this, like our business. But the most important thing for you to do is to continuously post and engage on your Google business profile. This is the hub of your business visibility online. It is important for you to see that, right? Everything is connected to this, which is why you need to be able to have five-star reviews. You want to have five-star reviews as much as possible and maintain that ranking, Um is Google business normally a pain to get set up? It can be, but it is important to set it up, to take that time and to go through it. Go to Google business profile um, and make sure that you've set that up today, immediately. And if you need any help, you our team can help you. Um, if it's too difficult for you to do on your own, I know that not necessarily everyone on this call might be tech savvy. However, our business does offer this as a resource to you guys. I so, want to chime in right there really quick. Yeah. That was a great question, Seth. Google is getting more and more difficult to set up it because is. they're trying to knock out any businesses that are not legitimate. So mm -hmm. the process to set up your Google business profile and actually verify it is getting more and more difficult. So I do suggest you set it up the right way because it's hard to backtrack your steps once it's set up. Great question. Mm -hmm. um, the Q&A area is an underutilized tool by most companies. So what you can do is if obviously you've gone to sales, roofing, roofing sales appointments, you've worked with homeowners, understanding what are the most common repeat questions you've gotten and adding that to your profile with a good answer. So it's very important for you to be able to have a place for your customers to engage from you, to learn from you and doing that directly on Google is a way to build credibility. And then, of course, joining any online directories. Um, when it comes to SEO, this is a long-term strategy to decrease your customer acquisition costs through great content that engages your clients and builds your rankings within, within your area online. So this is a strategy that also makes your lead volume more consistent because the higher you continue to rank more consistently, the more people, the more uh, read time your website's getting, the better your website's going to rank, the better content that you have, the better leads you're going to get. So SEO is really a term to build out your website with keywords, with blogs, and other technical strategies to continue to be more relevant on search and not have to pay that fee to Google for PPC or LSA. However, SEO, uh, Google LSA, Google PPC, all of these different options 
just to give you an idea, what I recommend is to go into this mentality knowing that you can at least cover your marketing budget for three months, four months during setup to make sure that this is not something that's going to drain your business. Marketing needs to empower your business and you want to make sure you're taking these steps in the correct way. For us, we invest significantly into our marketing. We invest significantly into marketing for our clients because we understand that marketing and good marketing is the faucet to help your business grow, just how we invested in our own marketing to bring all of you online to this webinar. Think about it. You have the opportunity to create the ideal client rooms for you to be able to do business with the people that you want to work with. Now, how much better of customers are we going to get from a group of people like you who are good business owners, who are taking the time to learn, to get more educated on a what is it, Tuesday afternoon versus just going online and cold calling different roofers or door knocking at different roofers office. It's so it's such a different experience and why you guys need to take marketing so seriously. And we're here to help you with any questions as well. So just a, a last question for this is, is your team scaring away customers? You can do such a good job of making sure you set up your online presence properly, making sure your ads, your marketing, everything that you're doing, you're going to networking events, you're generating referrals. However, if you don't have internal accountability, it's very hard to scale your business. It doesn't matter how much you're spending on marketing. So one of the biggest loss points we see when it comes to internally handling leads from our marketing efforts is there's no ed urgency leads being disqualified too easily and then not tracking where these leads are coming from so all marketing needs to be tracked when we set up marketing campaigns we set up call tracking and number tracking on everything because if you're investing in multiple lead sources you need to understand what lead sources are driving the business. And the most accurate way to do that is through call tracking, through making sure that you have every single lead that comes into your business, you know where it came from, where they saw you, how they saw you. So just asking them the lead source is not enough, okay? So here's a couple of appointment setting scripts and people are calling into your business that we recommend. The first thing is on the initial call, making the homeowner feel comfortable with the company. And this is something we actually talk about in our 411 roofing systems class is how to handle the internal sales process for the admin versus the sales rep and how uh, the, the admin or whoever's answering the phone can set the tone and warm up the lead for the sales process. It's a huge responsibility because it's a first impression someone has when they call your business. So the second objective is to be patient and to be understanding the person on the phone is not a roofing expert and they have an issue with their home. They're just looking for help. And then scheduling a sales rep to go to the home or give them a call as soon as possible. Now, here's one, the last point here. If they ask if we provide a specific service and we do, make sure you answer with positive energy. So, um, and I'm telling you guys this feedback just based off of the calls that we've listened to. We've heard clients call in, a homeowner call in to a roofing office and just the owner might be a little busy. So they're distracted when they're answering the phone. Hi. Uh, and you know, so there's not a proper greeting. There's not a tone set. So tonality, engagement, making sure that we're properly educating our clients when they call in, when we're asking them the right questions, we're connecting with them, we're getting them excited and we're building rapport to warm them up for that sales rep. So um, something that we recommend is having ways to immediately qualify your leads. And this might be different depending on your business where you can have a higher sense of urgency, uh, a warm lead, and then possible disqualification. Uh, if this is outside of your service area, what would make it disqualified? If it's a huge roof, it's a $100,000 job, you know, a one or two hour drive, that's not going to disqualify them. Would you still take that job? And does your team understand that? Because the person on the phone booking the appointments is going to be a huge difference in your revenue and in your client's experience. So taking the time for them to really understand understand what is a good lead for our business what is a disqualified lead and then cold lead what what, what do they want what if they just want general information but understanding not to disqualify them and how do we continue to engage with them so on this uh sheet that we are going to be sharing with you 
It does have all of this information for you. One thing that we want you to do is go ahead and scan this QR code. You're going to get access to our marketing basics guide. This is complimentary. It's just as a thank you for taking your time to work with us today. Um, and this guide will go through, it has a sheet with all of this information for you. And it has a couple of other different pages on it that will help you. Plus, you get to meet one-on-one -on -one with our team and ask any questions pertinent to your business marketing, um, and we'll make sure that we get any questions answered. So you get the free basics marketing guide. You go ahead and you can uh, book here. Just click the QR code. You can set this up on your phone and choose a time and date that works for you. So we're also going to go ahead and open this up for Q&A while you guys are booking calls. Um, Angela Martin. Kelly, do you mind uh, going ahead and dropping the appointment link for this QR just in case it doesn't scan for someone, please? Thank you so much. Uh, Ariel, if you want to drop, jump on the video for the Q&A. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and do a Q&A as well. There is um, in the comment in the chat if the QR code is not working for you. Um, for those of you who want to ask any questions, this is now open for you. And we're pretty much going to be here till you guys are ready to go. So this is your opportunity to ask Errol and myself anything at all. There's nothing off limits about your roofing company and your marketing. Yeah, so I, I want to jump in and say that, you know, we've done marketing, especially for roofing companies in pretty much every every single state, you know, so we have a really good idea of the landscape of what it takes. And I think one of the biggest secrets that we addressed in this webinar so far is that what worked for your neighbor or what worked for your competitor or what worked to your friend may not work for your company. Okay, strategies are different for each company in each location. So you want to make sure that you're understanding that and the, the solutions you're creating are customized to where your business is at and what goals. And that's why we gave you guys the lead calculator. Uh, so just to jump into some questions, um, when would you use Facebook ads over Google PPC? So what I love about Google is that there's a higher intent, meaning the people who call you from Google are in a different part of the customer journey. They're actively searching for your services, which means they're more likely to buy or schedule an appointment. With Facebook, on the other hand, it's another great tool to use. However, you're having to call those leads, nurture them, and convince them on why they should you know, bring you out for an inspection. So Google has higher intent. That's why I love it so much. Let's keep going. We have a ton of questions here, a ton of questions coming through the chat. I'll read them out to you. Uh, so does the website builder slash host affect the ranking on Google? We see a lot of WordPress sites ranking high. Yeah, that's a really, really awesome question. A little bit more on the technical side, Jacob, so you might have some technical knowledge there. Um, WordPress websites, we love WordPress. It's the most flexible and also um, the best platform, in my opinion, to use. And yes, how you set up the website and the site structure could have a direct effect on your Google ranking. So something we actually put together, and if you book the call with us, is we can go through and, and do a checklist on your site to see how your website is performing in Google's eyes. So Google gives us the tools to go ahead and check that out for you. Can you geofence Google ads like how you can geofence Facebook ads? Yes. So... For those of you who do not know, geofencing is awesome. If you've ever done door knocking, okay, a lot of us are familiar with door knocking, you can accomplish the same thing as physically door knocking with online ads by geofencing. And what this is, is it's basically drawing a digital fence around a neighborhood. So let's just say there's a specific neighborhood you want to target, or you know maybe you're in a neighborhood already doing work, so you want to target the neighbors. We could draw a digital fence around that target area and serve ads to those people. I'll give you an example. We're going to be attending RoofCon next week, all right? What we're able to do is we're able to geofence a conference we're at. So anybody, tons of roofers are going to be there. And you can do that for home shows and trade shows, anything, any type of marketing event that you're going to be at where homeowners are at, B&I meetings, you know, uh, large places where you know that people that are your ideal clients are at. Exactly. Um. Okay, so... Teresa, if you want to use that link to book an appointment, we would definitely love to help you. Um, what would be the minimum budget you would set for Google PPC? Yeah, so Google PPC budget, I would say on the minimum end, you should plan to spend at least $2,000 a month on PPC at this time. Now, depending on your area, it could be a little more competitive. 
when we what we could actually search based on your zip code and allocate what the best budget would be for your marketing. But I would say if you have to go in at the very least, two thousand a month should be spent on PPC. Um, and so we have two questions in regards to websites. So the questions are both in regards to setting up your websites. Is that better than your uh, Google or, and or Facebook? Yeah. So your website is separate from Google and Facebook and they all work together. Mm -hmm. It is not possible to have SEO and a fully optimized Google business profile without a website. So your website should be in addition to your Google business profile and in addition to your Facebook page. And, and let's talk about that for a second under the marketing basics. So your marketing basics at the bare minimum is you need a good website. You need profiles set up on Facebook and on Google. And you need to make sure that they all have the same logo, the same branding, the same colors, the same themes, the same uh, online messaging. Phone numbers are, you can use separate call tracking phone numbers to understand who called you from Facebook, who called you from Google, who called you from your website, the same thing for your vehicle wraps, all of that. So, okay, my question is very similar to yours. Okay, cool. Uh, what do you want to add on that with websites versus Google, Facebook, or were you good on that? Yeah, I think we're good on that. As long as you understand those are separate entities and they all work together and it's impossible to rank and have SEO without really having a website that builds up that juice and that momentum on Google. Something I want to just point out is Liz showed you all of the different ways you can show up on Google. I want you to think of that as digital real estate for your business. Mm -hmm. We all know how popular real estate is, real estate investing. You're investing into your business's digital real estate. And the more times you can show up on Google, the more likely someone who searches is to click your business over your competitors. And, and another thing for you to keep in mind when it comes to your uh, business and just basic setup is your business, your actual email, should be linked to the same domain as your website. For example, my email should not be Elizabeth uh, Calcedilla411 at gmail.com or it shouldn't be Elizabeth four dot Elizabeth dot four one one at gmail.com or at hotmail. It is Liz at business411.com. So I'm giving my clients that domain name through my email, through my contact information. It is more professional. It helps your business appear larger. Um, when If you're still using a Gmail, it is $6 a month through G Suite to get a professional uh, email that you can use for your business. So I highly encourage you. You can also use GoDaddy. You can use Outlook, but you should have a professional and centralized email for your business. Um, we use as our main one is admin at business411.com because that's where the, our hub of communication goes to. All where, where we're getting notifications, where we're doing marketing from. So what would be a solid budget for LSA? Hey, shout out to Antoine. What's going on? Yeah, so LSA, that's a great question. What's really cool is we can base it and tailor it off how many leads you want to get. So what I recommend doing is booking that call because we can go through and address your specific zip codes for everyone. It's going to be a little different. And based on the amount of leads you want in your zip code, we could tell you an exact budget for your area. Um, so Jacob from Cam's Roofing, he has another great and technical question. Is there a way to see all of the toxic backlinks connected to our site? Yeah, Jacob, I knew you were a little more technical and I was spot on with that. Yes, you can tell. And Google is getting stricter and stricter, as I mentioned. So they're rolling out new changes to their algorithm that are changing things, that's changing the landscape, changing the game. So people who did not um, who had a lot of spam on their sites, it's actually negatively impacting them. Um, there are a ton of tools out there that you can use to see um, if your backlinks are on that spam radar and remove them from your site. And another big thing is content. So as we roll into 2024 marketing strategies, content is very, very important that when you write, you have, like we have a few content writers on staff, very important that it's incorporated into your strategies and you have a professional write your content on your website and on your blog post and on your social media.
So um, just some, some last tips for all of you. Understand what are the results you're trying to achieve for your business? You know, um, it, it, what what do you need to do to grow your business? What what do you want to be at? Do you want to double? Are you doing 2 million, uh, 2.5 and you want to do five? If you're doing 2 million and your main goal is to have multiple locations, understanding what your business goals are and then aligning with yearly and monthly and weekly strategies to keep you moving forward forward is much easier than starting off with this huge goal and not knowing where to start. So think about it. What are the basic things that I need that are going to help me and then work on those fundamentals? Remember, building the fundamentals of your business structure, of your company vision, and your marketing are the building blocks that you're going to set your business up for the future. So if this is something that you guys need help with, uh, we really, this is something that we're passionate about. We teach a, a, an actual company structure class in addition to many of the things that we're doing, where I share the knowledge that I've learned from consulting for hundreds of roofing companies one-on-one -on -one and organizing how they work. So set up the appointment with our team and get into the business 411 community, regardless if you choose to use us for marketing, for business, business operations, for going in and training and developing your company. I, we also have continuous live trainings and so many different ways that we can work with you. But for us, it's all about starting off and meeting you at where you're at today as a business owner. And then what is the correct step for you to take next? Is it increasing your marketing? Is it creating a hiring strategy? Is it furthering your brand? Is there something that you just need to create to have a better logo, a better color scheme? to build your company so there's so many ways that we can help you oh a couple more questions um okay i'm starting bi my business but want to grow since we have seven years in the industry working for other companies congratulations so we've worked with several subcontractors and we've seen this trend growing um so if you have good subs and you're on this call i would make sure that you as a business owner uh really figure out how to keep them happy because we see more and more subs starting their companies, growing their businesses. Um, so it, it is really, really, really something that we see growing into going into 2024. Um, the next per in person in Florida is in January uh, 17th and the 18th. Um, and I highly recommend getting your tickets early because we have our current uh, tickets are on pre-sale, which is a huge discount off of the regular price. They go up to regular price, um, I believe in December. So you still have a couple more weeks to decide. If we are currently doing a number of these marketing strategy, is it more just a waiting game if we are a startup company less than two years? Um, I, I can answer that or you can, I, I think I want to answer that one. Yeah. So if you're doing multiple strategies and they're not working for you, the question would be over how long? You're saying you've been doing it for a number of these marketing strategies. Give me a little bit more specifics in case anybody's on this call and wants to, and I can I can uh, use that as an example. Uh, Teresa, uh, I believe you booked a call with our team on Friday. They'll give you the link and you'll be able to purchase the tickets then if you're interested. John Kinsler, Kinsler, we have many tools from 411, saved us a lot of time and energy, world class. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. That actually means a lot. That's awesome. Thank you. Where can I buy the tickets? Okay, the dates, please. Awesome. Uh, you're going to get that on your Friday meeting. Excited for RoofCon. By the way, our RoofCon booth is freaking awesome. Just you, if you're going to RoofCon, you need to go to our booth. My team is the best. Like our team did such a good job on the booth. Shout out to Kelly, who's our COO. She uh, makes all a lot of these projects come true. Booth 1131. And we're going to see you guys at the happy hour, the first day or the networking or welcome party event. Um, and then we'll be there the full two days. And we have a breakout. Uh, we have a breakout on our book that we wrote called Sell More Roofs. It's everything on homeowner communication. So we're going to be there. Um, the next Latinos in Roofing event, we do not have it on the calendar. I believe we're going to have to do something in January. But um, I believe it's going to be done in Atlanta or in Fort Lauderdale. I'm not 100% sure yet. However, um, make sure that we set you up with Vanessa Carolyn. Um, just send us your information and get with Vanessa. She'll be able to keep you up to date with any Latinos and roofing events that we have going on. Okay, so Kristen just gave us some more specifics. 
Uh, our website is WordPress with SEO active. They've been doing it for six months. They have their Google business profile. They have Facebook ads sporadically. They get a lot of views, but no leads or call-ins. Um, well, first of all, the thing that you're talking about is SEO. So that is definitely a more of a long-term play. What we can do is we can actually create a, a report and see what SEO is being done on your website. Uh, Ariel, if you want to chime in on that. Yeah, I think that's where the part comes in the most. It sounds like Google business profile, Facebook ads, SEO. Um, these are things that have to be targeted. You have to understand your conversions and what's working. But more importantly is you might not be hitting people at the right time in their customer journey. So they're not in the buying process. Mm -hmm. They're kind of just looking around, looking for some info, but they haven't got to that stage yet. And so that's why there's going to be other forms of marketing I may recommend for you that would be more getting people at that time where they're interested to buy. So it's a conversion issue for you. The views are great, but we need to figure out what that conversion piece is that's missing. A lot of it has to do with content as well and call to actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, content calls to action. And really that Ariel just said such a great keyword, which is where is your client in their buying cycle when they're doing research for your business, when they actually saw you? If they saw you driving by in your truck and they have no need for a roof versus if they saw you driving by in your truck and they're getting estimates from other companies, think about that the same thing as online. You know, it's all about that intentionality and their, their actual need. And I want to bring something up while a few more questions are flowing in here. One of the most important things we talked about is the tracking. And I can't tell you how many times I analyze um, businesses accounts when they schedule these meetings with us here, like we're going to do for you. And we see that the tracking is not set up correctly. It's so important. And we have systems in place that will not only track everything, but it will help you automate a lot of your lead journey and process for your clients on the marketing front. So that's something you definitely want to look at. Um, I'll give you one example here. I'm sure most of you have either a sales team, a salesperson, maybe you're doing the sales right now. Are you tracking those calls? So what I mean by that is your company needs to own that data. It's a part of your uh, marketing data. And it's important that you have call tracking numbers set up. So anytime your reps are making calls, someone's not texting their personal cell phone because then they own the client, your company doesn't own the client. And so these are the types of things we look at and we want you to set things up the right way. So some of you I, I see in the chat, we're just starting up. Let's do things the right way so you don't create more work and have to backtrack. And if you are already established and you notice there's some breakpoints in your marketing and tracking, we can, we, we can go back and help you with that and look for those holes. Yeah, there's a lot. There's always gaps in your business that you're going to have to continue to grow. You're going to have to continue to see what you can do to further your business. Um, when it comes to marketing, really, one of the things that we see set up people for success is having a clear vision that they can communicate to their clients, to their team members, because marketing begins with the vision and the way that you communicate that vision. So if your vision is clear and you can empower your clients through what you do, that's really that goal. You want to maintain a solid line of communication of uh, with your team and with your community so that you can get more of those ideal clients and find the and be able to build your dream team company and process with us. So um, yes, we do have workshops in Spanish. We have books in Spanish. I'm a Latina. I'm Cuban. Uh, so I speak Spanish fluently and English. Uh, my English is okay. No. <laughs> So definitely we can help you guys. For those of you who are bilingual um, or speak Spanish primarily, we have both English and Spanish speaking team members here to help you guys. Yes, for sure. Awesome. So when it comes to marketing, guys, a lot of you on here are wondering what are the next steps? You know, um, obviously book the call with us. We'll look through the strategy for you. Don't sit on the sidelines. Don't you know, you have the three options. It's do nothing. You watch other people take action. That's option number two, which I do not recommend. And number three is just book the call. Let us go over everything with you. We are here to help you. We do this because we love to do it, not because we have to. I'm very passionate about marketing and I love helping businesses grow. So we have you covered all the way. Awesome. Well, uh, if we don't have any further questions, we'll give you guys another minute or two to go ahead and comment any questions you might have. And while those questions, a couple more questions may roll in, I want to talk about marketing mindset a little bit. That's very important. And it's something that 
I truly believe I do not sugarcoat things for you guys. My family's from New York. We keep it real, okay? So we're not going to sugarcoat things, right? We're going to tell you exactly how it is. We're going to set realistic expectations. And I believe that's the best form of communication and relationships you can build with someone. So going into marketing, I want you guys to understand that this is not just a one and done thing. It's forever. As long as you have a business, you will always be doing two things, sales and marketing. So I want you to have that mindset going into it. It can sometimes seem a little frustrating at, at times when things aren't working right away. It's not just you that's going through that. Every company, including us, we all have campaigns that don't work. We shut them down and we keep going until we find the ones that do work. And that's how we got all of you here on this call today. So you know it works. So just go in with the mindset that marketing is something you're going to build over time and you might not get it on the first shot, but if you keep shooting, you will hit the target. Okay. So don't get discouraged. Don't give up, um, you know, try to enjoy it or get someone like us who does enjoy it to help you out. Yeah. Even for us, as we've continued to grow our own marketing, we've had campaigns that have worked and we had campaigns that one day worked and they stopped working and then we have to readjust and we have to re-evolve. So it's, that's what, what marketing is about. It really pushes you as a business owner to understand your market, your consumers, your business, your online voice. And the better you get at marketing, the better you'll be as a business owner and, and give you the better opportunity to be able to connect with more homeowners. What we feel is if you're a company that's ethical and you're trying to help your community and you're trying to serve your people, you have a responsibility to your community and your clients to push your business out there so that they're not working with contractors who are not doing a good job. You, If you know you're doing a good job, your customers in your area should only be using one roofing company and that's yours. It should be you putting yourself out there so that you can help people the best way you know how to and serving them um, and making sure that you know they're aligning with your ethics, your morals, and your values. Never compromise those for any client or any sale ever. So we really appreciate you guys all being here today. We're always here to help. Uh, remember, if you're a current client of ours, if you're a future client of ours, if this is the first time you've ever heard anything about us, we're here to help. This is something that we're passionate about. Um, I've been in the roofing industry for eight years, and the very first time that I stepped in onto a roofing trade show floor, I just fell in love with the industry, and I knew I'd be in it for a very, very long time. So uh, I appreciate you guys, just your time being here on this webinar today. Uh, like I said, it takes a lot of time to be able to just step away for a second from the million things you're doing in a day and focus on something that is not just immediate gratification. This is something that you're learning so that you can make better decisions on how to grow your business. So anything that we can do, thank you so much, uh, Jacob. I appreciate you. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you for those of you who are part of the Business 411 family. We could not do it without you. And for those of you who are coming into the Business 411 family, we look forward to helping you accomplish and crush all of your goals. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye.